$5. Prohibition. 245 millionaires listed in the United States. President of the club is unknown, and not all the board of trustees could be identified. However, the club champion for 1928 was a father, Dan Lack. Herbert Hoover was elected president. Construction of the new clubhouse was begun in 1928 under the watchful eye of the chairman of the building committee, Mr. John Wright. After $150,000 had been raised through a bond issue in which 1,500 shares were sold at $100 per share. The bulk of the shares were held by Toledo banks, but individuals located all over the country also purchased a sizable amount. The architects for the clubhouse were the Stofflet brothers, and the building was constructed at a cost of $109,032.95. The Commerce Guardian Trust and Savings Bank was appointed trustee and the Savania Golf Club entered into a lease on August 1, 1928 with the trustee for a period of 27 years. The intention of this lease was that the bond issue would be completely retired at the termination of the lease and the clubhouse and the land would be owned outright by the golf club members. No one could foresee at this time the general collapse of the economy with the club feeling the full impact in the early 1930s. 1929. The stock market crashes on October 24th. Bank and business failures are everywhere. Seven million unemployed. The club records were in disarray. The president is unknown and only three board members could be identified. However, one of those board members, Mr. Lester Howard, managed to win the club championship that year. 1930. Bread lines and soup kitchens. Prosperity is just around the corner. Gallant Fox wins the Kentucky Derby. Graf Zeppelin flies the Atlantic. Ground is broken for DeVilbus High School. Max Schmeling wins the heavyweight championship on a foul from Jack Sharkey. The Toledo District Open was held at Sylvania this year and was won by Tom McRae, Riverby Club professional, with a score of 306. Sylvania Country Club member Mary Houck is the Ohio State women's golf champion. 1931. Bobby Jones wins the Grand Slam of Golf. Will Rogers. Several Toledo banks close. The National Open was won by Billy Burke at Inverness after 144 holes. And Perry's Monument is dedicated at Putten Bay. A Savania member Father W.S. Danlack was runner-up to Gus Shoemaker in the Toledo District Open. The title was decided on the 22nd hole in a thrilling overtime match. Nineteen thirty-two, Franklin Delano Roosevelt elected president. Fireside chats, programs of relief. Recovery and Reforms. 1932 was a year of change and upheaval for Sylvania Golf Club, with three changes in club managers and many resignations among board members. The country was at the bottom of the Depression, and Sylvania was feeling the full impact on its membership. Fifty-four resignations by members were accepted in January alone. The club was trading memberships for balances owed to creditors. Accounts receivable from resigned members amounted to more than $10,000.
prospects for membership were brought to the club and allowed to play golf without greens fees, and then an attempt was made to secure their signatures for membership. It was in 1932 that realization came that the club would be lost unless drastic actions were taken. After both the club president and vice president had resigned in early 1932, Mr. Otto Spengler, club secretary, and Mr. H. P. Caves, treasurer, persuaded Mr. George P. Lutz to accept the presidency during this critical period. Mr. Lutz was an excellent choice for the leadership of the club as he had the time to devote to the job and became vitally interested in the welfare of the club. He was to serve a total of seven terms as president. Mr. Otto Spengler, an attorney, took upon himself the responsibility of devising some plan of reorganization which would pay off the club's indebtedness and save the club. He began working on a plan at this time, although it was not until 1934 that the details were worked out. Countless hours and extreme thought and effort were given to the project by Mr. Spengler, and many of the early plans had to be scrapped because of opposition from some members. During 1932, 57 men applied for the position of greenskeeper. The club professional, Mr. J. W. Kenny, worked for the season without salary. Dues were reduced from $125 to $75. The state of Ohio bought five feet of Monroe Street frontage from the club for $163.40. Green's fees were a dollar on weekdays and a dollar fifty on weekends. There was a net decrease of 73 members during 1932. Nineteen thirty-three, the Chicago World's Fair. Eleven million unemployed. The New Deal. Prohibition ends. Work Progress Administration. Toledo's Joey Brown. The club applied to the state of Ohio for a license to sell beer. Caddy rates were set at 50 cents for 18 holes. Butter, 23 cents a pound pork, seven cents a pound. Manfred Stofflet submitted plans and estimates to the board for a proposed new swimming pool. James Kenny, the club professional, won the Toledo Open. The financial condition of the club finally reached a point where obligations could no longer be met, and it was realized that some course of action would have to be taken if Sylvania was to continue to operate as a country club. Tragedy struck Sylvania Golf Club on September 12, 1933, when a guest was killed during an attempted robbery on the course. As related by Dr. Thomas Heatley, an eyewitness, this is what occurred. One afternoon, September 12, 1933, shortly after 4 o'clock p.m., we were playing a sixum comprised of Andrew Dangler, William Cavanaugh, George Leahy, Byron Picton, John L. Parker, and myself. Mr. Parker, a guest, was a World War I veteran and a salesman for Falconer, Dunbar, and Picton Insurance Company. We had left the 14th green and were making over to the 15th tee. I was scorekeeper and, of course, stopped on the green to make a record of the scores. I looked over the top of the scorecard and saw a holdup in progress. The bandit, Floyd Sailor Baldwin, was taking their purses and making them go to the far end of the tee. Andy Dangler made a dash for a sand trap. He got shot at before he reached the sand trap, but the bullet missed him. I made for the wire fence, hoping to obtain the license number of the car, which I knew the bandit must have in the Boy Scout reservation. As he saw me making that way, he turned to fire, and as he did so, the soldier, Parker, 
jumped him, knocking his gun from his hand. As they grappled, the bandit's hand fell on the gun, and while they were prone, he fired, the bullet hitting Parker in the eye and penetrating the brain. The bandit then got up and ran towards his car, meeting me at the Y in the road, but sped on to a brown car where an accomplice was waiting at the wheel, and they sped away. I could not obtain the license number because of the thick shrubbery. However, I could tell it was a Hupmobile. From this description, the police were able to find where the car had been purchased and the name of the man under suspicion. The police finally captured Baldwin in Oak Openings after a policeman had been shot apprehending him. The policeman was shot by a brother policeman in error. Sailor Baldwin is resting in state penitentiary at Columbus. The boy, Parker, I held in my arms in a rumble seat all the way to the hospital where some splinters were removed from the brain. He died, however, that night. We're in the money. The sky is 1934. Hitler rises in Germany. Chancellor Dolphus of Austria assassinated. Actress Marie Dressler and German President von Hindenburg die. Labor unrest over nation. Gangster John Dillinger slain in Chicago. Naval Armory and Jefferson Avenue YMCA are begun. Other interesting facts regarding Sylvania Country Club in 1934 was that Mrs. Julia Manton joined Sylvania Country Club as assistant club secretary in July and was to remain as the backbone of the office until her death in 1958. Rudolph Hummel joined Sylvania as head locker room attendant. Rudy was to stay with Sylvania until his death in 1955. The original membership in the new Sylvania Country Club numbered 21. 32 more came in within a month, and the group continued to grow with each passing month. A balance sheet showed $1,250 in the bank to start the new club. The operating statement showed a loss of $348 for the first month of operation. Richard Merritt was greenskeeper at a salary of $50 per week. The club professional was James Kenny at $75 per month. Caddy fees were 75 cents for 18 holes, 10 cents of which went to the club professional. It might be added that caddies were expected to watch the ball as well as carry the bag. The land and clubhouse were appraised at $350,000. Original land trust certificates could be purchased for $250 in cash or $46 down with the balance to be paid $9 per month. The reorganization committee, headed by Otto Spengler, after almost two years of work, had devised a plan which was acceptable to the Commerce Guardian Bank, trustees, and to the Sylvania Golf Club certificate holding members. Briefly, the plan was worked out as follows. Number one, the corporation, Sylvania Golf Club, was dissolved by a two-thirds vote of its membership at a meeting held on March 2nd, 1934. The lease between the Commerce Guardian Bank and Sylvania Golf Club was terminated by mutual consent. 3. A new non-profit corporation, Sylvania Country Club, was formed. 4. A land trust estate was created, represented by 300 land trust certificates. 5. A temporary trust agreement and lease were signed to be enforced during the period required to sell the 300 land trust certificates. 6. The money secured from the sale of the land trust certificates was used to buy up the original 1,500 shares at $100 face value issued under the 1928 bond issue. These shares were bought in anywhere from 30 cents to 70 cents on the dollar. 7. A new permanent trust agreement and lease were executed 
between the club and Commerce Guardian Bank after all of 1,500 shares of Savania Golf Club had been retired. This was not actually accomplished until May of 1937. These steps are a simplification of the actual reorganization plan and do not indicate the tremendous amount of legal work, correspondence in locating shareholders, meetings, financial arrangements, etc., which went into the achievement of the reorganization. To Mr. Otto Spengler, Mr. George Lutz, the boards of trustees during this year, these years, and to many other members who purchased several land trust certificates at this critical time, Sylvania Country Club shall be forever indebted. Put on the red.